Hey guys, I've got my September beauty favorites for you. I cannot believe the month of September is just about over. So if you are new to my channel, welcome. Uh, what I like to do is put as many of my favorites um, onto my face, actually apply them and cut away to that footage so you can see um, as many of the products as possible in action. Um, and then I will you know, try and swatch some of the other things. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it because I have quite a few things. I'm gonna start actually with a fashion item and you guys have seen me wear these earrings quite a bit lately. I purchased them when I was in New York earlier this month and I'm not wearing them today, but I really have been wearing them almost nonstop since I picked them up. So these are the Alexis Batar earrings and I love that there's like, um, like a silver finish to them. I love that there is a gold finish to them. I love that there's texture on the front and I love that these crystals in here um, aren't like super shiny. Like it almost makes this look a little bit more organic versus it being kind of flashy. And I just, yeah, I just really, really love them. So that's how far they hang down. So they're not really big. I love wearing them for daytime. I love wearing them for evening. They cross over really easily. And they've got this great French hook situation, which you guys know I love. So yeah, I've just been wearing them pretty much nonstop. So I just wanted to shout these out because I just think they're really gorgeous and really sort of uh, timeless and uh, classic, but kind of in like a funky way. And yeah, I just love that they work for day and night. Anyway, love them. The next thing I wanted to mention is actually a perfume. I actually haven't talked about perfumes in a while, but when the seasons change, I definitely feel like uh, my taste and like what I want to be smelling changes quite a bit. And this is actually perfume I have definitely talked about in terms of this like fall transition time, this sort of like late summer, early fall uh, season. And this is from Memo Paris, and this is their Sicilian leather uh, eau de parfum. And um, I have it on today, and it is the most incredible combination of leather and like Sicilian orange, like bergamot. It is so um, evocative of, and I always picture this when I put this particular perfume on, but I feel like it's like you're sitting in an antique car with those really rich leather seats and you're just driving around, the sun is low in the sky and it's a convertible and you're driving along a coast and there, you're getting whiffs of like really fresh florals and fruits and everything. And it's, oh yeah, it just, it's like warm without being um, gourmand. It's just incredible. And for me, fall transition is like this perfume. It is like synonymous with this perfume. So I just wanted to shout this out because this really is like the perfect time of the year to be wearing this. Um, so the Sicilian leather from Memo Paris. I just love it. Okay, on to the makeup. So I'm gonna start with uh, foundation and what I actually have on today. And that is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin, what's the full name? Vital Skincare Complexion Drops. And I've been using Atelier 2, which I think normally would be a little bit too deep for me. Um, but I did get a little bit of color when I was in New York City. Um, and Westman Atelier was actually kind enough in sending me Atelier 0.5. Um, which I still have not busted out because two, I think has actually been working out pretty well for me. So again, this is what I have on today and it's such a beautiful foundation. It's comfortable. You guys know how much I'm into the comfort of my makeup. I don't want to feel it <laughs> on my skin. So it really feels wonderful on the skin. It has uh, like a light medium buildable coverage. I really like to just apply like one light layer. I'm not really into anything too heavy. Um, and it really does a lovely job just perfecting my complexion, but you can still see a lot of my natural skin shining through, which I really like. Um, and it's uh, like, it has a little bit of like a radiant kind of glow. Um, it does set down a little bit and the radiant glow, like if you don't powder it, the radiant glow will definitely subside as the day goes on. Um, but if you wanna just add a little bit of light powder on top, it sets it immediately. If you have oilier skin, I'm gonna guess that you're gonna want to set it down with some powder. I have very dry skin, so I don't feel it necessary for me to like just throw powder on immediately, but you can obviously if you want, but it does, like I said, the glow and like the um, emollients of it definitely subsides as the day wears on. Um, and it wears really, really beautifully. I would say I've worn this 
all day, many, many days, many days, <laughs> at least like six to eight, nine hours. And it wears, like I said, it just wears beautifully. It doesn't wear away strangely. It doesn't cake up. It doesn't flake off. It doesn't do anything strange. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. So I really love it. And I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> did I mention this in my last month's favorites? I can't even remember. Anyway, I'm still continuing to love it if I did. Um, and I have been reaching for this quite a bit. So Atelier 2 is what I have on. And I do feel like um, maybe a mixture of 1 and 0.5 is what I'm going to be wearing in the cooler months when I lose any any bit of tan that I have. You can see I'm very pale, but any bit of tan that I got in New York, once that fades, I'm definitely going to have to like downshift to a lighter shade. So that is the foundation I've been reaching for all month. Um, I have been reaching for a powder, and I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised how incredible this powder is, how much I love this powder. Um, but this is the new Christian Louboutin. It's just their pressed powder. I think there's like a fancy French name to it, but I think it's just powder. Yes. And so it comes in this really, um, dare I say, obnoxious <laughs> packaging. But this is really neat because this feels like it's been hand embroidered. I don't know if it was, but it looks and feels like it's been hand embroidered. And it is a refillable powder. So the case is very, you know, reminiscent of a cushion foundation case. It just doesn't have that like flip up lid. Um, but this powder, this powder is so soft. If you watched my trying new makeup video, I unboxed this uh, in front of you guys and I touched and like kind of finger swatched the powder for the first time with you. I could not believe how soft the powder felt in the pan. And I was even more impressed once I got it onto my skin. So I did powder and set down the Westman Atelier foundation with this powder today. And I just wanted to show you the powder. I don't know if this is going to give you any kind of in <laughs> information, but there it is swatched on my finger. Um, so there is a little bit of like pigment to it. There are different shades and it is so flawless on my skin. It definitely tamps down any kind of radiance your foundation may have uh, left on your skin, but I feel like it has such a soft, soft satin kind of finish that it doesn't make your skin look matte or dry, even though it's taken down the shine. It just looks really beautiful, smooth, like the smoothing and the blurring effect of this powder is incredible is absolutely incredible so just wanted to shout this out because yeah i just left this out on my vanity and i'm surprised i actually haven't made a dent into the pattern there but i've been using it non-stop so this has become a very good friend of mine just hanging out on my vanity with me um so that's the powder that i've been loving um and in terms of bronzer and the bronzer that i have on today uh is an oldie but goodie so the charlotte tilbury airbrush bronzer this is the big one this came out maybe not last year but maybe the year before and i remember picking up uh this shade which is one fair and also the next one two medium and i remember thinking one fair was just so light i felt like this looked like almost like a well this could of course this could be a powder for someone with a deeper skin tone but i was like this just doesn't even seem like a bronzer but it's great when you don't want anything to va va voom in terms of like bronzing if you just want something a little bit subtle and so that's what i have down here underneath my cheekbones it just does a little something a little something so if you don't feel like looking like bronze to the gods and you just want just a little something this is perfect obviously if you have a skin tone similar to mine this shade is perfect and again come like the fall winter time i don't necessarily like to bronze up you know, not every day, uh, maybe when I'm in the mood, but like generally I like something that a little bit uh, less bronzy, less like bronze goddess. And this is perfect for the fall winter time for me. So that is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer, but definitely worth mentioning is what I applied that Charlotte Tilbury Bronzer with. So this is the brand new Sonia G Jumbo Bronzer Brush. This bronzer brush is incredible. It is made out of natural hair. Um, I would only use this with powder because this is a dyed hair. So I would not use this with like a cream or liquid, just powders. This brush is the perfect combination between firm yet 
like supple in its touch. So it's very, very effective without being like too harsh. And so it was just the perfect complement to this bronzer and the bronzer look that I was going for, where I just wanted a really light, very, very airbrushed kind of application of this bronzer, um, where I didn't necessarily want to like bronzer contour too much. I really just wanted to add just a little bit of color to my face after applying foundation. And this brush is just absolutely perfect. I love how it is not terribly dense, but it's not too floppy either, uh, where it's, you know, ineffectual. And I love the shape of it. It is slightly pinched here, so it's really great if you do want to do a little bit of carving out, um, but it is also quite wide. So when I'm brushing it across my forehead, it makes very, very quick work of, you know, bronzing up that area. It is wonderful. It's absolutely gorgeous. I do just want to hold uh, the Sonia G up against one of my favorite bronzer brushes, which is the 22 brush from Refer. And this 22 brush is much uh, denser and is going to give you a much stronger kind of application to your bronzer or whatever it is that you're putting on. Um, and you can see that the hair length for the Sonia G is just a little bit longer, but that's what kind of aids and it's like airiness up here and you can also see that the Sonia G is a little bit more pinched here so this is a little bit fatter so this is just a more kind of substantial brush so if you like a heavier application I would definitely stick with your refer 22 brush if you have it if you don't have it I can't recommend this brush enough um, but if you feel like you just you know you just want something light or this is actually excellent for powder as well I would definitely invest in this Sonia G Jumbo Bronzer. It is a really beautiful, beautiful brush. Perfect for bronzer, but really like an all-purpose kind of like face brush as well. Uh, so that I wanted to mention as one of my favorites because it is glorious. Okay, blushes. So let me start. <laughs> let me start with the blush that I have on. So I have on um, a Lancome Blush uh, Sutile. S-U-B-T-I-L, <laughs> one of their blushes. And this is in shade 217, 217. And uh, you probably saw me apply this in my get ready with me for my birthday dinner uh, video. And I'm not sure when this video is gonna go up, but I also mention it in another video. Uh, I'm not gonna ruin the surprise uh, if it has not come out yet. But anyway, this blush is so gorgeous. It is really, really beautiful. It like stopped me in my tracks. Uh, Lancome sent this to me and I opened it up and I just, you know, I went and I finger swatched it. And at first I was like, wait, what's going on? There's almost like a creamy feel to it. That's how fine the powder is. And then when I swatched it, I thought, wow, this is really pretty. You know, is there a sheen to it? I couldn't really tell, you know, were my eyes deceiving me? And then I got it on my cheeks and I do have a little bit of highlighter on, but really what you see on my cheeks here, this is all this blush. It is like magnificent. It is really, really gorgeous. And it reminds me of the Suku blush that I really love. The one that I think appeared in my last month's favorites. Um, Suku is a little bit difficult to get here in the US. You can order it off of Selfridges, but if you're not part of their global, uh, global like delivery uh, program, it can be very expensive to get things delivered. Um, and they, run out of product very, very quickly also. Very popular, they're only limited edition, blah, blah, blah. So this, I think, is a really great substitute for that Suku blush. I think it was it was their melting powder blush in number nine, Karanzaki. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a really great substitute for it. The shade is a little bit different. Um, I think this is a teensy bit, like barely, but a teensy bit warmer than the Karanzaki. Um, but you can see that I think it appears fairly neutral on the cheeks and I just love the sheen. It is so, so beautiful and yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I just think it's gorgeous. Really, really love this blush. It is uh, just such a hidden gem. Can I just say, I have never ever really gotten into Lancome blushes. They look beautiful, nothing wrong with them, but I've just never really like inspected them really like gotten into them and boy boy am i glad am i glad that i got a chance to use this because 
it has won my heart. It is really, really beautiful. So that is the 217 blush from Lancome. And then of course, I need to mention these Gucci blushes. They came out with blushes, six shades. I got all six. Number six, Warm Berry, is too deep for my skin tone. And so I'm kind of left basically with five. And I wanted to just pull out my favorites. I didn't want to just say, yeah, any of these blushes. I wanted to share with you like the ones that I've been reaching for personally, reaching for the most. So the first one is number three, Radiant Pink. This is just such a fun bubblegum pink. And this was great when these came out just earlier this month. You know, it was still pretty warm. It was like, you know, bef before fall technically uh, was upon us. And so it was just a wonderful like summer kind of blush. It just brings so much life to your face. And I should mention that the formula of these blushes are really quite beautiful as well. Super soft uh, powder, very, very silky feeling. And they have this really interesting, I don't know if you can tell, really interesting kind of subtle, subtle satin sheen to them. They're called a luminous matte blush, which I find really confusing because if it's matte, it's matte. If it's luminous, it's luminous. But I kind of get it. I kind of get it with this blush. It is matte. I wouldn't say that there's like any uh, metallic particles in there, there are no shimmers or whatever, but there is something, and I think it's just, you know, the formula. There is like like a, a soft satin kind of silky appearance to it. So really, really beautiful. So Radiant Pink is one. And then the other one, which I think is like a Grand Slam winner, is number five, Rosy Beige. I posted on my um, Instagram like a quick reel of me swatching all of these and I said, what's your favorite? So many people responded with number five, rosy beige. This is just a great neutral, slightly cool leaning, um, like mauve toned blush. Sorry, there's like a big kind of dollop of it right there. So those are the two shades that I have been reaching for the most. I think they're all really, really beautiful. I love one and two. They're probably the lightest of the two. It's like a pink and a peach. Um, and then there's like kind of like a neutral pink, number four. I can't remember the name, but number four is really beautiful too. If you just, if you like a pink, but maybe nothing as bright as number three, I think you'll like number four. Um, okay, so those are the Gucci blushes. And then the last thing I wanna mention cheek-wise is the Natasha Denona My Dream Cheek Trio. Now I'm gonna be talking about all of the Natasha Denona My Dream collection pieces, so just hang on. Um, but this is just, it's just really beautiful. This is a great blush to have in a palette. When I first opened this up and first used this blush, I was like, it's okay, it's all right. But it's, it's so like under the radar that it works like with anything. It works with a cool tone look. It works with a warm tone look. It's a cream blush, so it could be a nice base for maybe another blush that you wanna pull out. It was really a nice addition to a face palette. And then this glow cream base in the middle is like um, like a creamy, like slightly emollient kind of highlight. And that's actually what I have just on the tops of my cheekbones right here. I just tapped a little bit of it on there. And then this is a full on highlighter. So, let me just do some quick swatches of those for you because I don't have this on my cheeks, but there's the highlight, the powder highlight, and then there's the blush. And let me just do the cream highlight while I'm at it. And that's the cream highlight. That's the one that I actually have on my face. Um, so just a really like beautiful, beautiful face palette. I think it is uh, fairly universal. I wouldn't say this is gonna work for every skin tone, Obviously, um, I think this is definitely uh, workable for light, light medium skin tones. And if you have a similar skin tone to mine, I think you'll find that like the highlighters work and the blush is really beautiful. So wanted to mention this, and then let's just move on to this uh, Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. Now I just did my review video for this collection, so I decided to go with a different um, eyeshadow palette today, but my goodness, I love this palette. This is really just, it was surprising. It was really surprising to me because when I saw the promo pics of it, and I talk about this in that video, I just was like, oh, okay. It really just looked like the retro palette part two. Like it looked like it had just a lot of purples and pinks and I kind of dismissed it. But in person, I just feel like this palette is so, so much more interesting. It's so much, there's like so much more contrast in there. There's so many more tones 
I don't know if my eyes were just focused on this part, but I, f I felt like this part of the palette was basically the theme for the whole palette, but it really isn't. Like this whole side, these three columns gives you like a pretty um, beautiful range of like everyday sort of shades that you could use. Um, and then these two rows I feel like are a little bit more dramatic with this multi-chrome and these two shades that you could use as liner. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just a really gorgeous, gorgeous palette. And when I first opened it up, it was like, oh my gosh, where do I start? Like, oh, I could start with uh, this shade. I could start with this shade. I could go a little bit more cool toned over here. I could do something a little bit more neutral. You know, it was, it was like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't realize I was going to um, be so inspired and have so much fun just sort of like looking at it and thinking about different options that I could use with this palette. So... I really love it. And it's, you know, Natasha Denona quality. So the metallics are beautiful. The mattes blend out easily. The cream to powder uh, formulas are a little bit, uh, like a little bit creamy, but they're not hard to blend. They don't stick or anything like that. It's just a really beautiful palette. And I'm so happy actually that she like added these two deep matte shades, the black and the brown. Um, because you can, you know, line your eyes with those shadows. And sometimes black is just, too dramatic and too dark. And so I'm really glad that she added in this um, dark brown. Uh, so that is the My Dream palette. And I'll link to this video down below in my description box if you missed it and you're interested in uh, my demo of this eye palette. It is, it's just really beautiful. Um, but the eyeshadow that I do have on today is um, the Chanel Tweed Quad that I've been reaching for the most. And it's number four. I don't know if that surprises you, <laughs> but it's number four and it is what um, I have on my lids today. And I just have the two lighter shades. So just these two over here on the left. And so I have, well, it's probably pretty obvious. I have this on the outer corner and in my socket line. And then I have this uh, just on uh, like the inner corner and blend it over towards the center of my lids. I really like these tweed um, quads. I think they're they're really beautiful. I had a really hard time. Well, no, that, that's a lie. I did not have a hard time picking out my favorite for this month because this definitely is the one that I've been reaching for the most, but I really do like them all. And I really wanted to mention some other ones, but I thought, you know what? Not for my favorites. I do like them, but this one is definitely my favorite out of the four. Um, if I had to choose another one, maybe number two, right? Is it number two? The one that um, has the browns and the gold or whatever, that one's really beautiful as well. But yeah, I just love this one. It's very, very everyday. Um, it is very, very easy to wear. It's very easy to use. And I feel confident that I'm going to get like a really nice eye look when I use this quad. So that is the Chanel Tweed Quad in number four. Oh, and last for eyes, you guys. So I have this on today. This is the new Tower 28 mascara. I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. This mascara, like this is this is it. This is so good. So I have this um, on my lashes, obviously. <laughs> Where else would I put it, Michelle? So this is what's on my lashes. And it just does a little bit of everything. It makes my lash a little bit longer. It separates them a little bit. Um, it gives them a little bit of volume. Like it's just, it's like the Goldilocks bed. It is just right. I don't like over volumizing mascaras where they border on looking very clumpy. I also don't like like super separating lashes where it looks very like spidery. I don't like that either. I just want my natural lashes enhanced. That's all I'm ever looking for in a mascara. And this does just that. I love this mascara and it doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it doesn't do anything weird, it doesn't um, take a lot of elbow grease to take off at night. I don't think it's waterproof. Well, the name of it is actually called Make Waves. So maybe this, you know what, don't quote me, I'm not sure. But if it is waterproof, it didn't take a lot to remove at night. Um, so yeah, anyway, I love it. I love it, it is fantastic. I highly, highly recommend it. Oh, let me show you what the wand looks like in case you have not seen this yet. But it is uh, like a plastic bristle brush and it is slightly curved, you can see there. Um, so really easy to use and it's fantastic. All right, for lips, uh, Natasha Denona, my dream collection. I love this Natasha Denona 
um, I Need a Nude lipstick in, I believe the shade is Natasha. I love her I Need a Nude lipsticks. They're just really just fantastic nude shades. I don't, you know, it's all, it's all in the name. It's all in the name of the product. So that is the lipstick. It's very creamy. It's very pigmented, super comfortable on the lips. The lip gloss is just a perfect match to it. So if you just want to add a little bit of extra shine, actually, let me swatch this next to it. I was trying to swatch it on top of the, of the lipstick, but there's the lip gloss. So just a really perfect match. And then the lip liner. So the lip liner, Natasha, I actually have on, but I have a different lipstick on. There is the lip liner right up there. So perfect match, perfect trio. You can wear all three, two out of the three, one out of three, it doesn't matter. They're a perfect match for each other. Um, they complement each other perfectly. And I love the shade. There's something about the shade, you know, see how it looks, you know, it just looks pretty pink. Um, swatched, but it is a really beautiful, like kind of cool tone, and it just makes your lips look really full, <laughs> really full, really pouty. And if you like strategically place your gloss like right where the uh, light hits it, so like the top of your cupid's bow, and just like right down here, like where you pout, woo, your lips will look really full. So uh, love, 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 love that whole collection from Natasha Duma. I have to say, the whole My Dream collection is gorgeous. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, so Clay de Poe redid their whole lipstick line. They changed the packaging. Um, I don't know if they changed the formula. It feels it feels very same, very same. It feels very similar to me, uh, but I don't know for sure. But what I wanted to share with you, because you guys know how much I loved from their previous lipstick line, I loved the shade Bamboo. And this was just a really cool toned lip color. I loved it. I love the formula. I love the shade. And I reached out to Clay de Poe and I was like, do you, are you going to have something very similar to bamboo? And they said, yes. So I wanted to pull out three of my like favorite shades from this new line, which is basically 10, 11 and 12. Um, I have 12 on today. So I'm going to start there. It's called power mauve and Here's what it looks like in the tube. So you can already see it looks a little bit pinker, a little bit warmer than bamboo. So you can see, you know, it's like a little bit brighter. And again, that's what I have on my lips and I have it paired with that Natasha Denona liner, just FYI. And number 11 is the one that I think is the closest to bamboo. So I'm actually gonna swatch it up here, but it is a touch warmer. Can you see that? So this one is the new 11 and this was the old bamboo. So it's just a touch warmer. Um, and then number 10, which is tantalizing tan is uh, very peachy. I do like this shade. I mean, I'm just gonna swatch it down here cause it's not similar to bamboo at all. You can see it's like a peachy nude. Um, but these three are so far my favorites because they redid the whole line. I mean, I just, I have not gotten a chance to try all of them. Um, but if you're a nude lover like I am, I think you'll find something you like between um, 10, 11, and 12. So here is Tantalizing Tan. So that's number 10. This one is Power Mauve. So that's, again, what I have on my lips. That's number 12. This is the Old Bamboo. And this is number 11, Triumphant Tawny. So we're comparing everything to this one, Bamboo, which is the old one. And it is, it's cooler than these other ones, which makes me a little bit sad, but these are um, a good substitute. The number 11, I think, is the best substitute for Bamboo. So I've been reaching for those three quite a bit. Um, on top of the Natasha Denona, I've really been going like nude crazy. I'm still loving those Chanel uh, nude lipsticks. I didn't mention those because I think I mentioned them last month. I think I mentioned them last month. Anyway, still wearing and loving like 195 and 199 from Chanel. Love those shades. Yeah, and that is it. That is it for this month's favorites. Let me know down below what you guys have been loving. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.